Chapter 22 Then Joshua called the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh, and said unto them, Ye have kept all that Moses the servant of the Lord commanded you, and have obeyed my voice in all that I commanded you. Ye have not left your brethren these many days unto this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. And now the Lord your God hath given rest unto your brethren, as he promised them. Therefore now return ye, and get you unto your tents, and unto the land of your possession, which Moses the servant of the Lord gave you on the other side, Jordan. But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law, which Moses the servant of the Lord charged you, to love the Lord your God, and to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments, and to cleave unto him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. So Joshua blessed them and sent them away, and they went unto their tents. Now the one half of the tribe of Manasseh Moses had given possession in Bashan, but unto the other half thereof gave Joshua among their brethren on this side Jordan westward. And when Joshua sent them away also unto their tents, then he blessed them. And he spake unto them, saying, Return with much riches unto your tents, and with very much cattle, with silver and with gold, and with brass, and with iron, and with very much raiment. Divide the spoil of your enemies with your brethren. And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh returned, and departed from the children of Israel out of Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan, to go unto the country of Gilead, to the land of their possession, whereof they were possessed, according to the word of the Lord, by the hand of Moses. And when they came unto the borders of Jordan, that are in the land of Canaan, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh built there an altar by Jordan, a great altar to see to. And the children of Israel heard say, Behold, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh have built an altar over against the land of Canaan in the borders of Jordan at the passage of the children of Israel. And when the children of Israel heard of it, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered themselves together at Shiloh to go up to war against them. And the children of Israel sent unto the children of Reuben and to the children of Gad and to the half-tribe of Manasseh and to the land of Gilead, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, and with him ten princes of each chief house of prince throughout all the tribes of Israel. And each one was an head of the house of their fathers among the thousands of Israel. And they came unto the children of Reuben, and to the children of Gad, and to the half-tribe of Manasseh, unto the land of Gilead. And they spake with them, saying, Thus saith the whole congregation of the Lord, What trespass is this that ye have committed against the God of Israel, to turn away this day from following the Lord, in that ye have builded you an altar, that ye might rebel this day against the Lord? Is the iniquity of Peor too little for us? from which we are not cleansed until this day, although there was a plague in the congregation of the Lord, but that ye must turn away this day from following the Lord? And it will be, seeing ye rebel today against the Lord, that tomorrow he will be wroth with the whole congregation of Israel. Notwithstanding, if the land of your possession be unclean, then pass ye over unto the land of the possession of the Lord, wherein the Lord's tabernacle dwelleth, and take possession among us. But rebel not against the Lord, nor rebel against us in building you an altar beside the altar of the Lord our God. Did not Achan, the son of Zerah, commit a trespass in the accursed thing, and wrath fell on all the congregation of Israel? And that man perished not alone in his iniquity. Then the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh answered, and said unto the heads of the thousands of Israel, The Lord God of gods, the Lord God of gods, he knoweth and Israel he shall know. If it be in rebellion, or if in transgression against the Lord, save us not this day, that we have built us an altar to turn from following the Lord, or if to offer thereon burnt offering or meat offering, or if to offer peace offerings thereon, let the Lord himself require it. And if we have not rather done it for fear of this thing, saying, In time to come your children might speak unto our children, saying, what have ye to do with the Lord God of Israel? For the Lord hath made Jordan a border between us and you, ye children of Reuben and children of Gad. Ye have no part in the Lord. So shall your children make our children cease from fearing the Lord. Therefore we said, Let us now prepare to build us an altar, not for burnt offering, nor for sacrifice, but that it may be a witness between us and you and our generations after us that we might do the service of the Lord before him with our burnt offerings and with our sacrifices and with our peace offerings, that your children may not say to our children in time to come, Ye have no part in the Lord. Therefore said we that it shall be, 
when they should so say to us or to our generations in time to come, that we may say again, Behold the pattern of the altar of the Lord which our fathers made, not for burnt offerings, nor for sacrifices, but it is a witness between us and you. God forbid that we should rebel against the Lord and turn this day from following the Lord to build an altar for burnt offerings, for meat offerings, or for sacrifices beside the altar of the Lord our God that is before his tabernacle. And when Phinehas the priest and the princes of the congregation and heads of the thousands of Israel which were with him heard the words that the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the children of Manasseh spake, it pleased them. And Phinehas the son of Eleazar the priest said unto the children of Reuben and to the children of Gad and to the children of Manasseh, This day we perceive that the Lord is among us, because ye have not committed this trespass against the Lord. Now ye have delivered the children of Israel out of the hand of the Lord. And Phinehas the son of Eleazar the priest and the princes returned from the children of Reuben and from the children of Gad out of the land of Gilead unto the land of Canaan to the children of Israel and brought them word again. And the thing pleased the children of Israel. And the children of Israel blessed God and did not intend to go up against them in battle to destroy the land wherein the children of Reuben and Gad dwelt. And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad called the altar Ed, for it shall be a witness between us that the Lord is God. Psalm 41 Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Yea, mine own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. But thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me, and raise me up that I may requite them. By this I know that thou favorest me, because mine enemy doth not triumph over me. And as for me, thou upholdest me in mine integrity, and settest me before thy face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, from everlasting and to everlasting. Amen and Amen. Good morning and a pleasant day to you. We are almost at the end of another work week. And surely the Lord has been good to us. I trust that the weather is favorable where you are. Right now, it is raining with thunder and lightning in Michigan. But we thank God that wherever we are, His presence is with us. And that He is indeed a shelter in the time of storm. Today we are focusing on Joshua chapter 22. And I'm reading verses 11 and 12. The Bible says, and the children of Israel heard say, Behold, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh have built an altar over against the land of Canaan in the borders of Jordan at the passage of the children of Israel. And when the children of Israel heard of it, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered themselves together at Shiloh to go up to war against them. Reading again, Joshua chapter 22, verses 11 and 12. The Bible says, And the children of Israel heard say, Behold the children of Reuben and the children of Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh have built an altar over against the land of Canaan, in the borders of Jordan, at the passage of the children of Israel. And when the children of Israel heard of it, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gather themselves together at Shiloh to go up to war against them. There's a very beautiful chapter commentary on what transpired here in the book Patriarchs and Prophets by Ellen White. And I would suggest that you read that commentary there as well. Today, our message is entitled, Relating to a Rumor. Relating to a Rumor. Let us pray, Father, we pray that you will take charge, refresh us with your presence, 
and may your Holy Spirit speak to us, even now, for Christ's sake. Amen. Friend of mine, have you ever heard something bad about yourself that was not true? Have you ever heard something bad about yourself that was not true? The account in Joshua chapter 22 is an account of a rumor and how that rumor was put to rest. What transpired in Joshua chapter 22 was that two of the tribes of Israel, Gad and Reuben, Gad and Reuben, with half the tribe of Manasseh, had received their inheritance before, before crossing the Jordan into Canaan. They were a people of flocks and herds, a pastoral people. And so to a pastoral people, the wide upland plains and rich forests of Gilead and Bashan, offering extensive grazing land for their flocks and herds, had attractions which were not to be found in the land of Canaan itself. And the two and a half tribes, desiring to settle here, had also pledged themselves to furnish their proportion of armed men to accompany their brethren across the Jordan into Canaan and to share their battles until they also should enter upon their inheritance. And so the tribe of Gad and Reuben and half the tribe of Manasseh said, look here, we're not going to go over this Jordan into Canaan with you if it's okay with you, Moses and the Lord. We're going to stay on this side of the Jordan because there's a lot of grazing for our cattle here. But our armed men, the armed men of the half tribe of Manasseh and the tribe of Reuben and Gad would go over with you into the land of Canaan and we will fight with you until you also come into your inheritance until you also conquer land and are settled and then we would return over the Jordan leave the land of Canaan and go over back to our families on the other side of the Jordan and so the obligation had been faithfully discharged when the ten tribes entered Canaan 40,000 of the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and half the tribe of Manasseh prepared for war Pass over before the Lord unto battle to the plains of Jericho. Joshua chapter 4 verses 12 and 13. For years they had fought bravely by the side of their brethren. Now the time had come for them to get unto the land of their possession. As they had united with their brethren in the conflicts, so they had shared the spoils, and they returned with much riches and with very much cattle, with silver and with gold and with brass and with iron and with very much raiment, all of which they were to share with those who had remained with the families and the flocks. They were now to dwell at a distance from the sanctuary of the Lord, and it was with an anxious heart that Joshua witnessed their departure, knowing how strong would be the temptation in their isolated and wandering life to fall into the customs of the heathen tribes that dwelt upon their borders. And so while the minds of Joshua and other leaders were still oppressed with these anxious forebodings, strange tidings reached them. Strange tidings that beside the Jordan, near the place of Israel's miraculous passage over the river of Jordan, the two and a half tribes had erected a great altar similar to the altar of burnt offerings at Shiloh in the land of Canaan. The law of God prohibited on pains of death, the establishment of another worship than that of the sanctuary. And if such was the object of this altar, it would, if permitted to remain, lead the people away from the true faith. And so the representatives of the people assembled at Shiloh, and in the heat of their excitement and indignation, proposed to make war at once upon the offenders, upon the tribes of Gad and Reuben, and half the tribe of Manasseh. However, through the influence of the more cautious, it was decided to send first a delegation to obtain from the two and the half tribes an explanation of their conduct. And so ten princes, one from each tribe, were chosen. At their head was Phineas, who you remember had distinguished himself by his zeal in the matter of Peor. Now, the two and the half tribes, the tribe of Gad, Reuben, and half the tribe of Manasseh had done something which was open to suspicion, and they had done this deed without 
explanation building an altar without informing anybody and explaining what this altar is for and so now the ambassadors led by Phineas, taking it for granted that their brethren were guilty met them with sharp rebuke they accused them of rebelling against the lord and bade them remember how judgments had been visited upon israel for joining themselves to Baal Peor. In behalf of all Israel, Phineas stated to the children of God and Reuben that if they were unwilling to abide in that land without an altar for sacrifice, they would be welcome to return to Canaan with them to a share in the privileges and possessions of their brethren on the other side of the Jordan. In reply, the accused explained that their altar was not intended for sacrifice, but simply as a witness that, although separated by the river of Jordan, they were of the same faith as their brethren in Canaan. We say that again. In reply, the accused tribes of God, Reuben, and half the tribe of Manasseh explained that their altar, which they built, at the point where they crossed the Jordan was not intended for sacrifice, but simply as a witness that, although separated by the river of Jordan, they were of the same faith as their other brethren in the land of Canaan. They had feared that in future years, their children might be excluded from the tabernacle as having no part in Israel. Then this altar, erected after the pattern of the altar of the Lord at Shiloh, would be a witness that its builders were also worshippers of the living God. And so with great joy, the ambassadors accepted this explanation and immediately carried back the tidings to those who sent them. All thoughts of war were dismissed and the people united in rejoicing and praise to God. And now, to correct any further misunderstanding, the children of Gad and Reuben and the half-tribe of Manasseh now placed upon their altar an inscription pointing out the purpose for which it was erected. And they said, It shall be a witness between us that Jehovah is God. Thus they endeavored to prevent future misapprehension and to remove what might be a cause of temptation. O oh, friend of mine, how often serious difficulties arise from a simple misunderstanding even among those who are actuated by the worthiest motives and without the exercise of courtesy and forbearance what serious and even fatal results may follow misunderstandings at home misunderstandings in the marriage misunderstandings at the workplace like the the man who was hugging up a girl and walking down the road and somebody ran and told his wife, I saw your husband hugging up another woman. And the man's wife just smiled because her husband had called her and said, you know what? I met cousin Jane and we walking down the road. It was his cousin. They hadn't seen each other for a long time and they were hugging up and walking down the road and talking. But somebody saw it and said, ah, rumor, this is, this is, this is adulterous. And sometimes you can have misunderstandings in different areas. Somebody takes a piece of tool or equipment and in their rush to leave the office, put it somewhere other than it's assigned a place. And then somebody comes the next day saying, oh, the last person I saw with this tool is Joe or Mary. And they must have carried it home. And people are stealing things from this office. When they discover the person was just hurrying out and just put it in another place. How often serious difficulties arise from a simple misunderstanding, even among those who are actuated by worthiest motives and without the exercise of courtesy and forbearance, what serious and even fatal results may follow? The ten tribes remembered the ten tribes who came with Phineas to find out what was the problem. The ten tribes remembered how in Achan's case, God had rebuked the lack of vigilance to discover the sins existing among them and now they resolved to act promptly and earnestly but in seeking to shun their fatal error which happened when they did not seek out the sin of Achan they had gone to the other extreme now of just accusing the tribes of God Reuben and the half tribe of Manasseh without first hearing their explanation. Instead of making courteous inquiry to learn the facts in the case, they had met their brethren with censure and condemnation 
Had the men of Gad and Reuben retorted in the same spirit, war would have been the result. And so, friend of mine, while it is important on the one hand that laxness in dealing with sin be avoided, it is equally important, on the other hand, to shun harsh judgment and groundless suspicion. And so, while very sensitive to the least blame in regard to their own course, many are too severe in dealing with those whom they are supposed to be in error. We say that again. While very sensitive to the least blame in regard to their own course, many are too severe in dealing with those whom they are supposed to be in error. If somebody tells them something that they heard, they are, are, they are so upset and vexed and angry. But when they hear something about somebody else, they are the first to censure and judge and condemn. No one was ever reclaimed from a wrong position by censure and reproach, but many are thus driven further from the, from the right path and led to harden their hearts against conviction. A spirit of kindness, a courteous forbearing deportment may save the erring and hide a multitude of sins. Friend of mine, observe, the wisdom displayed by the Reubenites and their companions is worthy of imitation. You see, while honestly seeking to promote the cause of true religion, they were misjudged and severely censured, yet they manifested no resentment. They didn't hold it to heart and say, I'm going to get back at y'all. No, they listened with courtesy and patience to the charges of their brethren before attempting to make their own defense and then fully explained their motives and showed their innocence. Thus the difficulty which had threatened such serious consequences was amicably settled. Friend of mine, even under false accusation, those who are in the right can afford to be calm and considerate. We say that again. Even under false accusation, those who are in the right can afford to be calm and considerate. God is acquainted with all that is misunderstood and misinterpreted by men, and we can safely leave our case in his hands. Have you ever heard the statement that God knows all about me, so it doesn't matter what people think about me, if by his grace I am endeavoring to do right? God is acquainted with all that is misunderstood and misinterpreted by men, and we can safely leave our case in his hands. He will also surely vindicate the cause of those who put their trust in him. Even as he searched out the guilt of Achan, he will do the opposite and let the innocence of those who are innocent come to the surface. And those who are actuated by the Spirit of Christ will possess that love which suffers long and is kind. O oh, friend of mine, it is the will of God that union and brotherly love should exist among his people. The prayer of Christ just before his crucifixion was that his disciples might be one, as he is one with the Father, that the world might believe that God had sent him. And this most touching and wonderful prayer reaches down to this age, even to our day. For his words were, for the words of Christ were, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. John chapter 17 and verse 20. And so, friend of mine, while we are not to sacrifice one principle of truth, it should be our constant aim to reach this state of unity. We say that again. While we are not to sacrifice one principle of truth, it should be our constant aim to reach this state of unity. This is the evidence of our connection with Christ. This is the evidence of our discipleship. Because Jesus mentions, Jesus stated in John chapter 13 and verse 35, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. In, in, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 and 9, the apostle Peter exhorts the church. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 and 9, he says, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye also are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. O friend of mine, I ask you the question again. 
Have you ever heard something bad about yourself that was not true? The account of Joshua chapter 22 presents principles that we all can use when such a situation occurs. When we hear rumors about ourselves or rumors about others, we will know how to address them because God has written these things and placed them in the Bible for our example and for our learning and admonition. May God bless you today, real good, in Jesus' name, as we meditate on Joshua chapter 22. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word today, for the counsels therein. We pray for those who perhaps have been hurt by rumors. Help them to have the same spirit of the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh. Not to send out rumor for rumor and to try to slight people on Facebook and, 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 and WhatsApp and send around bad things to, as it were, get back at them. But to simply present the truth and then rest our case, leave our case in the hands of God. And so we pray that you will be with all those who have made prayer requests. We pray that you will answer these requests and look upon them, Lord, and grant the blessing for which they were made. And please grant us a successful day. And may we be ready for the Sabbath at sunset. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.